Hi guys, it's Reagan and welcome to the start of a very fun vlog because this time it's going to be a book shopping, come book shopping with me style vlog. But let me set you down for a second. But the reason why this is extra special is because first and foremost, we are going to my favorite bookstore in the entire world, which is Book People, which is locally here in Austin. At one point, and it might still be, it was the largest independent bookstore in the world. It's multi-story. It is truly just one of the best places to go book shopping. And if you're ever in town, I highly recommend checking it out. I have actually not been to Book People, one of my favorite places on the planet, uh, since I moved back to Texas, which feels shameful. And two, which I thought was kind of fun, is the very first book shopping video I ever filmed was at Book People, and I actually have never filmed one since. So it's been five years since I filmed a Come Book Shopping With Me video there. So I thought, you know, it's a great day. Let's go together. Let's check out some reads. In terms of what I am looking for, there are a few books that are on my summer reading list that I have been wanting to pick up. One is a well-known and beloved like sci-fi series and the other is a newer release. But also I just kind of want to look around and peruse and see what they have. They always have the best uh, recommendations from employees. So I'm just curious to see. So anyway, welcome to the book shopping vlog. Let's head out into the world. Let's do some shopping. And then obviously I will do a haul at the end, but let's go. We are on our way, listening to the new Harry Styles album, making our way. What's the temperature outside today? It's hot, but it's not too hot yet. Last time I filmed this vlog was 106 degrees outside. Oh my God. I know. I watched it back just to kind of get re-inspired because I haven't been uh, filmed a vlog at Book People, here's Clay, in five years. And when we went, right when I graduated college, it was 106 degrees, so. Ooh 86 degrees today, a little, a little different. We've arrived to the promised land. There's the thing, it's going inside. I'm so excited. The obvious first stop, and as I said, they always have the best employee staff selections and they always have these really custom cool little signs. This is actually the second floor. This bookstore is huge. So many great books to check out. The question is, is Clay gonna get anything today? Mm -hmm. I already have two books in hand. Is he gonna leave empty-handed? all in my hands. I have been wanting to read Jennifer Egan's new book. I feel like I have to start with her, you know, first really big one, which is a visit from a goon squad. Should I buy it today? That's the question. This paperback of Clara and the Sun is so nice to look at. <laughs> Something. 
Well, he'll be inspired to finish the book he's currently reading. The world may never know. Update. He grabbed a book. There it is, folks. He found something. Let the great world spin. Ooh. And that's a wrap. We did some serious damage. I'll show you the haul when I get back. Hi, guys, and welcome to A Few Days Later. I'm here to do the book haul portion of this book shopping vlog. Honestly, it was a delight to be back at Book People. It's just truly one of my favorite bookstores on the planet, from the employees to the recommendations to the floor plan and just the pure overwhelming amount of books to pick from. Impeccable. Amazing. Not to mention, if you are in the Austin area, they have incredible community events as well. Author signings to other things. It's just such a great place for book lovers. In terms of books, I bought three books and Clay actually picked up a book himself. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the books that I grabbed at the store. The first book I grabbed was a title that I immediately walked up to the help counter to see if they had. It was the title that was at the top of my list to grab and also their last remaining copy. So it seems other people have good taste too, but also I felt very lucky, very destined to receive the copy of this book. And that is Rosewater by Tate Thompson. This is the first book to a sci-fi series that I've heard so many amazing things about. In fact, I'm so looking forward to picking this book up. You might have already seen that this is on my June TBR. Honestly, I truly can't wait to read it. I've read other books by this author and I really enjoy his writing style, but many say this series is like the best so far that he has put out. Rosewater is a community that lives on the edge, quite literally as they surround this very mysterious biodome. Its residents are comprised of the hopeful, the hungry, and the helpless. People eager for a glimpse inside this biodome and the mysterious healing powers that it's become associated with. Our main character in book one is Cairo and he is a government agent with a criminal past and he also has this special innate ability to be able to sense the space around this biodome. And at the beginning of this book, he basically begins to realize that other sensitives like himself are beginning to go missing or possibly even being killed off. And he begins to investigate this. Everything about this book just honestly sounds so cool. I already know Tay Thompson can write suspense really well. And this very bizarre setting of this biodome really calls out to me. And I love that a community has surrounded itself around it. I want to know the mysteries behind it. I want to uncover what's going on with our main character. I grabbed this book and I hope I will be marathoning not only this, but the rest of the books in this series. Next book I grabbed was a bit of an impulse purchase, but also not because it's been on my list to buy for years. That is A Visit from the Goon Squad by Jennifer Egan. I really have been wanting to read this book, honestly, ever since a friend told me about it. I hear it's very strange from the topics, to the writing style, and even just the structure and presentation of the book itself. Like I hear there's like a literal PowerPoint presentation at one point in this book, which really sounds intriguing to me. Jennifer Egan also has recently come out with a new book called Hard Candy. I don't think they're related or connected in any way. Like you don't need to read this before reading that. But because that book is on my list, I do feel very strongly that I want to at least start with this book, which did win the Pulitzer Prize before I jump into her newer release. I feel like I need to have like a foundation of a writing style before I can read newer books. I don't know. It's like to me, it's like season one versus season three, if you know what I mean. Based on the structure and synopsis of this book, I do feel like there is a high chance I'm gonna love this. It's multi-POV and I love following very disparate, unlike characters and hopefully watch them kind of come together in the end. One of our characters is Benny, who is an aging former punk rocker and record executive. And next we have Sasha, who is a passionate, troubled young woman he employs. Here, Jennifer Egan brilliantly reveals their past along with their inner lives of hosts of other characters who paths intersect with theirs. I love a character-led story set in corporate America, but with a record label twist. I'm very curious. And then the last book I personally picked out to add to my shelves is a newer release from earlier this year, which just sounds so good. And that book is When We Were Birds by Anya Lloyd Bonwo. And this is an epic love story set in Trinidad, bringing together two characters who are outsiders that find like love and respite with one another. I hear this book is lyrical and beautiful and lush and just honestly like how the writing style is described just makes me feel like it 
it is perfect for me. I love a dramatic, historical, literary, romance-leaning story, and I'm really hoping this will be a new favorite. It's a story following two main characters. The first is Yujidi, and she has been raised on a house on a hill where the city sort of meets the rainforest. And every generation, her family is kind of responsible for helping shepherd souls into the afterlife. But Yujidi wasn't really properly trained for this position and also has been mistreated by her mother for most of her life. So after she passes, she is actually looking for a way out. Her other main character is Darwin and he was raised in the countryside by a very devout mother. He has always been told to never really interact with anything to do with the dead, but looking for work, he is only able to find a position in grave digging. So he decides to take it up, meaning he must portray the life that his mother built for him in hopes of being able to provide for them both. These two characters again cross paths. I love that this book kind of both has to do with death, but I feel like so much to do with life as well. I really just want to watch two people fall in love and I just want this book to be beautifully written. It has amazing reviews. I really feel like I'm going to love this and I'm not sure if I've ever read a book set on Trinidad before, so I'm also really excited about that. But this new release just really sung to me, so I'm so happy to add it to my collection. And the last book I'm going to show off is actually the book that Clay picked up for himself and that is Let the Great World Spin by Colm McCain. And this book, I believe, opens and is partially centered on the story of the man who walks the tightrope between the Twin Towers. Clay and I really love documentaries and that particular concept, watching people kind of do like crazy feats, is something we both really enjoy. But more than that, I believe this book is also very much centering New York City and the people who live there and also kind of capturing America in this time of transition in 1974. Clay really loves books set in New York about New York. He's very passionate about that city and also loves kind of interesting feats such as this. This honestly sounds super interesting, so I'm really curious to hear his thoughts and I honestly might pick it up soon after that so we can chat about it. I don't know, sounds really cool. I'd honestly never seen it before, but it had one of those recommendation cards. Which book people has all over the place kind of explaining why one of their booksellers loved it. So really sold him and honestly really sold me as well. Alrighty guys, that is my bookstore haul from my book shopping adventure. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you soon with another one soon. Goodbye.